So let me show you my approach to the otoscope exam. The first thing you need to know is how to hold the instrument. And I want you to notice that I'm holding this like a pen. And the part that makes the light and that has the lens is at the tip. It's a delicate instrument, so I'm holding it like a delicate instrument. Not like a hammer. More like a pen. So here I am holding it like a pen with my fingers close to the end. Once I turn the light on, I'm ready to go. And the first thing I'm going to do when I examine Satish's ear is I'm going to straighten out his ear canal. Most of the time this doesn't hurt at all. So I'm going to pull on your ear a little bit there, Tisha. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So now I'm pulling on his ear and that's what's straightening out the canal. I'm also going to get his head to lean over a little bit. There you go. And that'll make my job easier because the canal is really oriented so that I can see better this way. The next part is really critical and that is where I'm going to place the speculum. The speculum is not designed to be shoved into the external canal. The speculum is just designed as a let's call it a instrument protector so that your instrument doesn't get dirty. Because really you don't need the length of this speculum at all to see what you need to see. And I'll show you why. If I place the speculum here just gently on Satish's tragus, see how I'm just pl placing it just inside the ear canal at the tragus. Why am I putting it there? Because that gives me a, a, a place to rest it so that I know where I am before I start looking through the lens. What you want to do is have your speculum stay in one place, not go any deeper than this while you're looking through the lens. So I've got the speculum held at the tragus and notice also that I have my hand against his cheek. So I'm bracing my hand against his cheek and if Satish moves his head, move your head a little bit Satish, if he moves his head I'm not going to be pushing the speculum into his canal because I'm bracing against his cheek. So that's critical. I'm braced against his cheek and my speculum is just resting against the tragus of his ear. That's when I look in through the lens. And already with the speculum going in no further than it is now, I can see what I want to see. Just by moving my head here and changing the angle of my vision, I can now see the short process of the malleus. I can see the malleus itself and now the umbo and the light reflex. Notice I'm the one who's doing the moving, not Satish. And I'm the one who by orienting, not moving the, the speculum in any further into the canal, but just by orienting it differently, I can see what I need to see on the tympanic membrane. So moving over to the other side, here I am with my otoscope again, but now I'm going to change hands. Now I'm holding the otoscope like a pen in my right hand. And that frees my left hand to pull the ear up and out like I was before. The short process, the malleus, the umbo, the light reflex, all visible from this distance. If I want to get a closer look, I can move in. But really, everything is visible from back here with the speculum barely, barely in the ear canal. Now, of course, it's easier because Satish doesn't have a whole lot of wax in the way. And smaller children will have smaller canals and they may have an accumulation of wax. But in my experience, by pull, pulling on the oracle and moving it around, you can straighten out the canal a whole lot and really make your life a lot easier in visualizing the tympanic membrane. Better that than trying to shove this long speculum into the ear canal and risking damaging skin or hurting the patient and making them fear doctors for life. Mm.